Getting out of that car. Uh huh. Wait. Wait, don't be a fool. Put that gun away. Please. You must give me a chance to explain. Hey, we better beat it before the cops show up. We don't want to get mixed up in no killing. Well, come on, you guys. Don't keep me waiting. Stop clowning around. Where is she? Where's Ruth? She's gone, Puccini. Oh, you mean Ruth left town, huh? Oh, I get it. <laughs> She's sore at me. We had a little argument and then she left town, huh? <laughs> but don't worry. I know my Ruth better than anybody else. She'll be back. <laughs> it's worse than that, boss. What do you mean, worse than that? Hey, come down here, you guys. Now, what are you guys holding back from me? What's the matter? She's dead. What did you say? She's dead. We was waiting for her where you told us, and when she showed up... When she got out of the car, all of a sudden, someone let go with a handful of clouds. Who? Who did? A woman. She fired four slugs into her, and that made her get away before we could do anything about it. Would you know that woman again if you saw her? Sure. Sure, boss. Sure. Sure, boss. So, Ruth is dead, huh? Gee, I never figured it that way. I said, oh, bury me deep. Play some marble slap at the head and the feet. And on my breast, put a turtle dove, and tell the cockeyed world I died for love. Say, do you know any cowboy songs, Happy? <laughs> Gotta go for that cow country crooning, huh, Petey? Oh, I love it. Do you know, Happy? I'd go right now and join the James Boys if I had the train fare out west. What are you talking about? The James Boys are dead. Dead? They are not dead. Why, I just saw them in a the motion picture. The James boys? Yeah. <laughs> By George, you're right. I saw them myself. <laughs> oh, <coughs> there goes that blooming charlotte horse again. 
I just have so much trouble with this thing. Oh. I need more liniment. <clears throat> Too bad. Yeah, I'll have it fixed in a minute, though. This will fix it right up, boy. <clears throat> There you are. Ah, much better. Yeah. Say, you better get out of here and, and deliver them papers. They should have been on the street a long time ago. All right. Hi, Mr. Green. Fine. How's everything going, boy? Uh, circulation manager's working overtime. How many issues so far? I forgot to call them at the first 5,000. Hey, Happy, what's this? Uh, what's which about? This ad here. I'll buy your life. If you're interested, apply Thursday, Alhambra Arms. Ask A. Darnell. Hmm. That sign kind of screwy, don't it? Well, it sure does. Say, you don't think I could have made a mistake in setting up that type and spelt wife with an L, do you? Oh, Happy. Then who gave it to you? Oh. I took the ad myself. A swell looking guy blows in here. Don't even ask me how much the ad's gonna cost, but shelves a double saw buck in my hand. Twenty dollars, then? Yeah. Come on, hand it over. Oh, all right. Just a minute. <laughs> Woo! I thought at first I might have smoked it. <laughs> That's swell. Just what, I, just what I need for the Robbins family. Let's see now. The oldest kid needs shoes, the, the youngest medicines, and the rest of them a flock of groceries. <laughs> Always think of the other guy, aren't you? Yeah, I get a great kick out of it, too, Happy. That's all there is to life. If you can't help the other fellow when he's down, how can you be right with yourself? Yeah. I'll buy you a life. Alhambra Arms. Hey, Darnell. That has a familiar ring. No fluid. Yeah. I've got it. He's the author of the famous Captain Cambridge novels. What's them? Mystery stories. Oh. Hello, Super Morgan. Well, this is Breen, the friend in need. Say, listen, will you send over to the Robbins family another $5 basket of groceries? Yeah, yeah, same as last time. <sighs> Thanks. Oh, yes, sir. Ice water? Plenty of ice. <laughs> oh, how do you do, miss? How do you do, Mr. Slovis? Uh, Mr. Darnell advertised... Oh. oh. Oh, around that corner, lady. Round, round that corner. Thank you. I came in with the milkman. What's your name? Annie. Annie Winterbottom. Your address? Now, that's different. 420 8th Avenue. 420 8th. Now, how long have you lived in the city? Well, I was born down by the gas house. Mind waiting a moment, please? Sure. Here's $10 for your trouble. I'll call you when I need you. <clears throat> how do you do, Mr. Slivers? How do you do? I came in to see about this advertisement. Oh, you won't do. That advertisement is for females only. An oversight. Oh. Well, I, I'd still like to see Mr. Darnell anyway. Well, you can't. Instructions are that Mr. Darnell is available only to lady applicants. Ladies? Ladies. Oh. And what is your name, please? Just call me Mary Jones. Oh, you'd rather not give your real name. So I'd rather not be known. That's very smart. What's your address? May I answer that when I know what you want me to do? No, well, certainly. Uh, how long have you lived in the city? About two weeks. Mm -hmm. You live with your parents? No, they're both dead. I see, but you uh, do have friends here. No. I'll question her, Albert. Uh, this is Miss Duncan, uh, Mary Jones. Hello. Where were you born, Miss Jones? In a small town in the Middle West. You married or single? I've never been married. Oh. Why do you want to sell your life? Because I need money. How much do you need? $20,000. 
That's a lot of money. What do you intend to do with it? I want it for my brother. Does he live with you? Yes. What does he do? He's an artist. Oh. I suppose you want this money to further him and his career? Yes. Does he know you're doing this? No. Well, how are you going to explain your sudden wealth? I can tell him it came from an uncle in South America. Won't he see through that? My brother is blind. Miss Jones has an interesting background. Very interesting. Yes, I agree with you, darling. Miss Jones, after I've explained the details of this proposition, if you're still willing to go through with it, I'd like to give you a cash advance in evidence of good faith. And the rest? Oh, that'll be paid to whomever you name after you're dead. After I'm dead? Why, yes, the advertisement said we were buying your life. Yes, I know, but... You make it sound as though I were dead already. You are. Practically. Oh, I beg you. Well, say, did you get that job in there? Why should my affairs interest you? Well, perhaps it's just because I'm a well-bred young man looking for my daily good deed. I thought well-bred young men were taught to mind their own business. Well, not when they're as big as I am, but... Well, say, maybe I ought to introduce myself. My name is Breen, Mordecai Breen. Here, here's my card. Mulligan's, good for one meal. Corner oh, no, no, and no. Hogan. Sorry, my mistake. Here. Mo Glass, pawnbroker. Oh. Mo, oh, no, no, wrong again. Here, here, here's the right one. Mordecai Breen, editor and publisher of The Friend in Need. Was it your newspaper that carried the ad, I'll buy your life? Yeah, that's why I'm here. What do you mean? Well, it's customary for all good newspapers to investigate their advertisers. There's oh. A, I have a hunch there's something wrong with that setup in there. You have a hunch? No, no, wait. I, I don't mean to pry into your business, but won't you please keep my card? And if ever you really need a friend, will you, will you promise to look me up? All right, I promise. <laughs> Thanks. Hey! Now don't forget! Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the Like my song? How do you know I was home? A sixth sense, I guess. The blessing of the blind.
Now you're crying. Even though I can't see you, I can feel it. Why, Dale? Why? Because I can't forget it was my fault you went blind. Won't you please smile? Just once, for my sake, Sid. There, that's better. I like you so much better when you smile. I was worried about you today. Worried? Why? I don't know. Just restless, I guess. I had a strange feeling something was happening to you. Phil, something happened to me today. Something wonderful for both of us. Such as what, for instance? Such as our getting a big sum of money. Enough for you to go to the Lawrence Institute and have that eye operation we've talked about so often. And then you can paint again and see the trees and the flowers and the blue sky. And in a few years, people from all over the world will visit some great museum. Go on, sis. I can see them now, pointing to one of your pictures. I can hear them say, there's a landscape by Philip Layden. As blind as I am, sis, I can see that. Just the way your words have painted it for me. Suppose we do have the money. What if the operation isn't a success? Suppose it's all hopeless. What then? It must be a success. It's got to be. <laughs> but even if it isn't, there'll be enough money to take care of you for the rest of your life. What is it? What's this all about, Dale? Phil. Do you remember Uncle John, who went to Brazil? Yes. He died there a year ago. Well, they've just found his will. He left us some money. He did? How much? $20,000. The lawyer advanced me $2,000. I have to go to South America to collect the rest of it. $18,000. $18,000. Yes. You're going to the Fernhaven Rest Home. I made the arrangements to have you prepared for your operation. You won't be here then while I'm going through with it. Oh, I can't, Phil. The law requires that I be there to collect the money. There's a boat sailing tomorrow night. Will you be gone for long? I said, will you be gone for long? I don't know. I'm going to miss you, sis. Oh, I'll miss you, Phil. Maybe it's all for the best. I know it's all for the best. Now go over and play something, and I'll get supper ready. Hello, Mr. Hammer. Hello, Breen. There aren't any needy cases being let out of jail today. Well, that isn't exactly why I came. You, you, you see, uh, there's an advertisement in my newspaper that I, I thought might interest you. I haven't time for any advertisements now, Breen. I'm working on an important murder. Well, perhaps I can help you. What kind of a murder is it? Oh, go away. What kind? There's only one kind. People get killed. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I hadn't thought of that. Hey, who, who was it? That Parmalee girl who was found dead outside the Soraka Club. Oh. All I've got are a couple of bullets, this piece off a woman's heel, and a pearl I dropped on the floor, found on the scene of the crime. I don't suppose you ever heard of pearls. You eat them with oysters. Uh -huh. This one's worth about $500. Expensive meal. Oh, here. Here, is this it? 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I know. That belongs to Ruth Parmalee that was murdered. It don't. And neither does this piece of leather off a woman's heel. Um, no, no, the pearl's the thing. Look, you amateur sleuth. Don't you think I thought of that? My men have grown bunions traipsing that trinket around. No jeweler recognizes it. One man said he was positive it was a foreign rigamajig. Oh, that's too bad. But don't think I'm stymied. I'm liable to make an arrest anyway. Oh, that's well. Now, Mr. Hammer, about this ad here, I... Look, Breen, I know you do a lot of good finding people work and homes, but I can't be bothered right now. Please do me a favor just this once and go away. All right, all right, I'll go away. Hey, look, Hammer. Hey, little Lulu. Say, Hammer, when Joe Thompson gets out of prison tonight, will you, will you give him this suit? Huh? What'd you say? Uh, I said, will you give this suit to Joe Thompson? It'll, it'll make him happy and give him a fresh start. Sure, sure. Do you know this Darnell who put in this ad? Not personally. Ain't he the orchestra leader at the Club Sirocco? Yeah, I, I believe he is. That's him. Now there's a setup I can't understand. What do you mean? Darnell. Engaged to a rich girl like Valencia Duncan. She's madly in love with him, yet he chases around with other dames. It's a screwy world, my friend. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, do you think there's anything to that, Ed? No, I don't know. Thanks just the same, Green. Oh, don't mention it. And uh, you won't forget Thompson, will you? No, no. Ah, nice little Susie. I don't know what I'd do without my little Susie. Nice little Susie dog. Yes, a nice little Susie dog. Yeah. <laughs> looking for Susie. And I'm looking for Mr. Breen. Oh, well, you wait here just a minute. See, he's a pretty busy man, but I'll see if he'll grant you an interview. <laughs> Mr. Breen. What is it, Abby? Mary wants to see you. Mary? Mary who? Well, I, uh, uh, I, uh, I know, you forgot to ask her. All right, tell her to come in. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Breen will see you. You didn't expect to see me so soon, did you? Well, if I may be frank, I didn't, but, but I'm delighted. My name is Jones. Jones? Mary Jones. Well, I'm delighted to meet you, Miss Jones. Won't you sit down? I... I'm here to take advantage of that offer of help. Well, that offer still holds. But I'm wondering... Wondering? Whether I can trust you. Why, how can you say such a thing? Sitting there looking straight in my eyes, shining like diamonds with honesty. Are you sure it's honesty that's making them shine? Well, well perhaps we'd better start all over again. Exactly. What I need is an executor. I'm willing to pay the fee. Oh, why do people always start meetings like this talking about money? Why don't they start with friendship uh, or something? I don't believe I've ever had a friend, a real friend. You've got one now. Thank you. My request is rather strange. After I've explained it, I want you to tell me honestly whether you care to undertake it or not. Oh, I'll undertake anything that's honest. And, well, in your case, I, I might even stretch a point. Your part is perfectly honest. I have here two envelopes. This small one is addressed to you. When you receive $18,000, you are to open it. Yeah, when will that be? After I'm dead. Oh, come now, you're too attractive a person to start jumping off bridges. This letter here, Please I... let me continue. In this, you will find the name and address of the man to whom you are to give the money. Is that clear? Perfectly. After you've shuffled off this mortal coil, the insurance company or somebody will... Well, they'll deliver to me $18,000, which I am to deliver to gentlemen, name and address in this envelope. That's right. After you've given him the money, you're to burn this letter unopened. Yes, but what if I don't get the money? Well, I refuse to pay. Then you're to open this. The two-story of Mary Jones. 
Say, uh, I'll bet that's interesting. It is. If you don't receive the money, open it, read it, and see that justice is done. <laughs> Say, what kind of funny business is this? If you don't care to do this for me... Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't get on a high horse. I, I mean no offense. It's just a peculiar request, that's all. I suppose it is, but it's the only way I can do it. Why don't you tell me the whole story? I can't. I wish I could. All I can do is trust you. Well, don't worry about that. If I say I'll do a thing, I'll do it. And you're sure you understand? Yes. If I get money, I deliver to man address in this envelope. If I don't get money, I open up the big envelope and fight for justice. And Mary Jones. And you'll do it? I will. <laughs> On one condition. That you'll have dinner with me. Oh, I can't. Huh. Well, no dinner, no executor. But I'm willing to pay the fee. My fee for legal services is always 25 cents, but I'm afraid that, well, in the, this case, I'll have to ask for an additional retainer. One dinner. I guess it won't hurt me to have one last fling. I'll pay the fee. <laughs> All right. Where will I call for you? You can't. Where can I meet you? Club Sirocco. Club Sirocco? Yes. It's a date. Ten o'clock? Oh, uh, I hadn't thought of it before. This may put you in considerable danger. Oh, forget it. I will. If you do this for me fairly and honestly, I'll owe you more than you'll ever know. I know I'll rest easier with you on my side. Thanks. Hello, darling. Hello, sweet. You look gorgeous. Thank you. Surprised to see me? Yeah. I thought we could go to the Sirocco together. Marvelous. Have some coffee before we go? No, sir. Yes? Oh, yes. All right, tell him to come up, please. Who is it? Lieutenant Hammer. Who is Lieutenant Hammer? Uh, he's on the Ruth Parmalee case. Oh. Coffee? Thank you. Come in, Lieutenant. Come in. Oh, you know Miss Valencia Duncan. Yes, I've seen her at the Sirocco Club. Oh, uh, am I intruding? No, not at all. We're just leaving for the club. You have a cup of coffee? Uh, no, thanks. I wanted to ask you about this little paper. You Did you advertise to buy somebody's life? <laughs> Why, yes, that's my ad. I write detective stories. Perhaps you've read some of them? Yeah, very good, too. Well, they haven't been lately. You see... I ran out of good ideas, so I decided to advertise and get some life stories of real people, that's all. But that's an idea. Maybe I could get some help like that to solve some of my murder cases. Why don't you advertise? Maybe I will. Have a cigar, Lieutenant. Well, oh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Darnell, uh, you're a very versatile man. You write books and uh, you lead an orchestra. Have you ever been on the stage? Mm, only in amateur plays. Uh, ever been a female impersonator? the Higgins kids in those clothes you sent over for them. <laughs> Did they fit? <laughs> like they were made for them. <laughs> well, say, Grady, could I put something in your safe? Sure, come right into the office. <laughs> what you putting in, a big bankroll? No, but something just as valuable. A letter <laughs> I, I don't want to lose. Say no more about it, pal, it's safe. You better put your moniker on this so you can get it back in case anything happens to me. That's right, Denny, I hadn't <laughs> thought of that. More like it. 
understand. Just to make the thing look a little bit more business-like, do you mind giving me a receipt? Sure, always give a receipt. That's my motto. <laughs> Received from Mordecai Green. One big envelope. Very personal. Signed, Dennis O. Grady. Thanks a million. <laughs> now, how about a nice table for two? Sure, give you mine. Nothing's too good for my friends. <laughs> That's my motto. <laughs> no, no, I think I'd like this one, Grady. I want you to meet our orchestra leader. Mr. Darnell, shake hands with one of my best friends. Well, well. Darnell, did you say? Yes, uh, Albert Darnell. Not the famous writer of mystery stories. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll have to plead guilty. <laughs> you know, I tried to meet you once before when you put an ad in my paper. Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, anything to get material for one of my books. Well, that's how it was. Yeah. Well, that was a clever idea. <laughs> well, won't you join me in the drink? Oh, never while I work. Uh, thanks, just the same. That's right. Never mix liquor with labor. That's my motto. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Got to keep the show moving. <laughs> I'll see that Matt gives you the best in the house. Thank you, Grady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Miss Valencia Duncan, who recently made her debut as our feature artist. <laughs> And have I a chance? Incidentally, I can cook, and darling, I don't hate to darn or sew or read a book. And when you make a date, I must record all the facts of your life from way back. To play them all over and over again on a playback. And incidentally, do you smoke? And are you wild or tame? Can you easily take a joke and incidentally what your name? your life from way back to play them all over and over again on a playback and incidentally do you smoke and are you wild or tame can you easily take a jump and incidentally what your name night. May we never forget it. I'm sure I never will. And I'm sure I'll never want to. <laughs> I wish I knew everything that, that happened in that interview with Mr. Darnell. Maybe you will someday. My interview with Mr. Darnell. May it never prove anything but a success. Why did she come here? I don't know, darling, but I'm going to find out. Well, darling, I now, wonder sweetheart, if you... will you stop worrying about me? It's a beautiful bracelet you have. <laughs> Do you like? Yes. Did you know one of the pearls were missing? <laughs> so it is. I'll have to get another one to replace it. Have you had that bracelet long? 
about three years. Any more questions, Mr. Breen? <laughs> Here's hoping I will be permitted to buy you another pearl. Cuanto diera por saber tu sufrimiento y aliviar con mis caricias tu pena. Mas prefieres ocultar los sentimientos que tus ojos no pueden ya callar. Déjame penetrar en el misterio de tus ojos para saber qué ocultan con tanta discreción. Quiero apartar de tu camino los sabrojos, borrar la sombra de tu desilusión. Quiero implorar tu amor y a tus pies vivir de enojo para entregarte entero mi amante corazón. Que guardes mi cariño junto con mi canción en este impenetrable misterio de tus ojos. Well? Well? Why do you keep staring at me like that? See some room for improvement? Yes. Such as? Such as being just a little bit more frank with me. I'd like to know more about Mary Jones. That's all written in the letter I gave you this afternoon. To Mary Jones, success. I get any on you? No. I'm very sorry. I don't seem to be able to hold anything tonight, not even your attention. Are you sure there's nothing more you want to tell me about yourself? You mustn't question me. There's nothing more I can tell you. Well, will you permit me to ask you just one more question? Something I forgot when you were in my office? What is it? How will I know when Mary Jones is... is dead? You'll know, all right. The whole city will know when Mary Jones is dead.
He's a friend of ours. How are you, Phil? Everything's fine. I'm perfectly comfortable. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm on my way to the steamer now. Promise me you won't worry. I promise. And be sure you don't worry on my account. Thanks for all you've done for me, sis. Bon voyage. Goodbye, Phil. sealed envelope in which is written the entire story. If you pay him the money as agreed, that letter will be destroyed. If you don't, well, use your own judgment. Miss, please get a message to the gentleman sitting at Mr. Grady's table that I've been called away suddenly. Take me to the police station. Did you see what I saw? Yeah, it looks like the dame that rubbed out Ruth Palmley. Did you recognize any of the policemen? Yeah, they look like they're from Central Station. We better phone Bocchini. says the lady who was with you just left in the police car. Police car? Yeah, from Central Station. How am I to be sure this ain't a rib by somebody? I don't know what you mean by that. I'm simply here to confess to the murder of Ruth Palmley. Why haven't you given yourself up before? Because I thought I could get away with it. And my conscience bothered me. I killed her, I tell you. If you want any more proof, here's the gun that fired the shots. Okay, lady, you ask for it. Lock her up, Mac. And tell the matron when she searches her to bring that bracelet and her slippers back here to me. Wait a minute. What's up? I want to ask this girl a few questions. Are you her lawyer? Yes. Do you know she's just confessed to a murder? I don't care what she's confessed. She's innocent and I know it. And what's more, I'm going to prove it. What did you say your name was? Mary Jones. Do you know this man, Miss Jones? No. I never saw him before in my life. That's good enough for me. Take her away, Mac. Look here, Breen, I like you. But when it comes to butting in on a case like this, all bets between us are off. Hammer. I'm going to help that girl. I want to see her alone. Not a chance until I talk with the chief. Nothing you can do will help that girl. Now go home and forget it. All right, I'll go home. But I won't forget it. Wait a minute. What do you mean by busting in here like this? What do you think this station is, a joint? <laughs> Save that line of talk for somebody that scares easier than I do. You know better than that. What do you want here? A little while ago, one of your cars picked up a girl over at the Club Sirocco and brought her here. So what? So what? I want to see her. Oh, you're on the police department now, are you? Might be a good idea if I did. I want to see that dame. 
Maybe that could be arranged if you have a good reason. Reason? Supposing my two boys here saw her shoot Ruth Parmalee. That's a pretty good reason, isn't it? It's perfect. That's all I need, an eyewitness to the crime. But look, Hammer, you need a motive, too, to make it perfect. And don't forget that. Well, maybe I'm getting lucky all of a sudden. A motive's liable to jump up from any place any minute now. Yeah. Come on. Bring her up to the bars. I want to see her close. Step up closer, Miss Jones. This gentleman wants to see if he can identify you. He's a little nearsighted. So you're the one, huh? You did it. What do you mean? Why did you kill my Ruth? Kill who? Why did you kill Ruth Parmalee? Because I was jealous. Jealous of what? She tried to take my sweetheart. Look at me. You're lying. My Ruth never wanted anybody but me, Pacini. You heard what she said, Hammer. There's your motive. She kills for jealousy. Jealous of my Ruth. <laughs> Come here. Take a good look. Make sure. Are you sure this is the girl that rubbed my Ruth out on the parking lot of the Sirocco Club? Sure, that's the girl. Satisfied, Mr. Hammer? Perfectly, Puccini. You did a swell job. Yeah. And you see that you do a swell job, too. Meaning what? I mean this. You see that she pays for what she did. And don't you fail, Hammer. Because if you do, I'll see that she pays. Me, Puccini. And life for a life. We find the defendant, Mary Jones, guilty of murder in the first degree. Hello, Green. Hello, Matt. Where's Grady? Oh, he's gone. Gone? Yes, this is the night he plays poker. Well, I don't know where he's playing tonight. Listen, Matt, I gave Grady a letter to put in the safe. Yeah? Here's his receipt for it. I'd, I'd like to get it. Oh, you're out of luck. I can't give it to you. Grady locks the safe, and I haven't got the combination. Do you expect him back tonight? Not when he plays poker. Would you mind telling Darnell I'd like to see him in here? This seems to be your bad luck day. Darnell's left. The first fiddle took over. Well, will you tell Grady to give me a ring when he comes in tomorrow? I'll leave a note on his desk and have him call you. Oh, thanks, Matt. Thank you. Hello, Buccini. Yeah, this is me, Buccini. Did you get that letter? Not yet, but don't worry about it, I will. You better hurry up, my client's getting restless. Who's your client? Never mind about that. My client's given me $3,000 to buy that letter, but I want you to get it and we'll split the three grand. Oh, 50-50, huh? Well, if Buccini gets his share, <laughs> that's all right, huh? Okay, as soon as you get that letter, give me a ring. Yeah. All the whispering about. That's a tough mug in your office. A tough what? A dangerous hoodlum. I know him from way back. So watch your step. Well, what's he doing in my private office? I told him to wait out here. What did he say? Scram or I'll fill you full of slugs. Uh-oh. Your name, Breen? It is. I don't like people to put their feet on my desk. I like my company. Take your feet off my desk. Oh, a tough guy, huh? Well, let me I tell you Take your feet off my desk! Oh. I'll get you for this. I'll oh, forget it. What are you doing here? 
I only wanted to tell you that the boss wants to talk to you. Who is the boss? Bocini. Bocini. Don't, don't go, Mr. Breen. Bocini, he's dangerous. Dangerous? Yeah, he's from our own neighborhood. He's bad. What does he want to see me for? Bocini wants to talk to you about something important, a letter. A letter? What letter? I ain't saying anymore. All right, where is this, Bocini? I got a car waiting. Okay. Just around the corner. Okay, I'll go. You stay here, Happy. I'm expecting a call from Grady. Yes, sir. Tell him to leave word where I can get in touch with him later. All right, come on. He's bad, Mr. Breen. I'm telling you, Buccini is bad. This is Mr. Breen, boss. He bumped my head against the wall, and he took my gun away from me. <laughs> I took it away from him because he's too impulsive. Well, that's nice work, young fella. But that's a little dangerous. When Puccini wants to see a man, he wants to see him. And besides, it ain't good policy to beat up on one of my boys. You catch? And just who are you, Mr. Puccini? There is only one Buccini. That's me, the greatest builder of concrete blocks in the whole world. Oh, but I don't want any concrete blocks. Well, you might sometime. You know what? No, what? Inside, I'm soft. Everything is beautiful in here. And when somebody don't do what I want, then I'm hard, just like my concrete. Catch? No, I don't catch. Look, Mr. Breen, one word from Puccini, and you could be cut up into small pieces and put into my concrete building blocks. And then when I pass the big building, there's a name on it, the Breen Building. I say to myself, who's holding that building up? Nobody but you, my friend. You understand? I want that letter. Why don't you dictate all this to his secretary and send it to me? Special delivery. <laughs> I golly, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, barring your suggestion of chopping up people for building material, I, I like you too. Well, do you hear that? Oh, there's a man. <laughs> Puccini is quick. He hates or he likes, just like that. <laughs> My friend, shake hands. Why not? <laughs> now. We are friends, huh? That's what I say. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brain, you and me should be in business together. Well, perhaps we will be someday. Who can tell? <laughs> That's the way I like to do things. Quick like. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I like to do it, too, only quicker. Put those guns away, you fools. <laughs> <laughs> they don't understand friendship, <laughs> but you do, eh, Mr. Breen? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I understand with the best of friends, <laughs> until you get your hands on that letter. I knew it. You're a smart man, Mr. Breen. Well, say, Buccini, as friend to friend, how much were you offered for that letter? Three thousand dollars. Why, you sap. Huh? Well, I thought you were smart. I honestly did. What do you mean? Don't you realize that if somebody offered you $3,000 for that letter, it's worth a lot more money? Don't you catch? Oh, yeah, I catch. Bocini asked for more money. And then when they bid high enough, you give me the letter, then we split, huh? <laughs> My pal. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, now that we're going to be friends for life, let's you and me come clean, you know, like one guy to another. That suits me. Fine. Now we get down to business. Uh, you got the letter in your pocket, huh? Well, just to prove to you that my heart's in the right place. Here. Here's all my cards on the table. <laughs> Hi, Gully. He's my friend. I trust him with my life. But frisk him anyway. Get familiar.
Mulligans. <laughs> Good for one meal. Corner of 8th and Hogan's Alley. Hey, golly, that reminds me. I'd like to have something to eat myself. How about you, Mr. Brady? Oh, thanks. Well, are, are you satisfied I don't have the letter on me? Perfectly satisfied, my friend. Perfectly satisfied. You can go now. You'll be hearing from Pacini again. Okay. Sure, sure. Why not? Well, so long, my pal. So long, my... <clears throat> <laughs> Can't you see you've got to tell me the truth? I've told you all you need to know. Who is Bacini? I don't know. I never saw him until his men identified me as the killer of Ruth Parmley. Oh, you didn't kill her. I know you didn't. No matter who identified you. A jury will think so. I'm not going to let you go up before a jury. Not if I can help it. How are you going to stop it? I'm going to read that letter. No, no. You can't. You promised you mustn't do that. I believe that letter contains the truth, and if you won't tell me, the letter will. If you open that letter before the $18,000 is paid, I'll hate you. Do you understand? I'll hate you. That letter is all that stands between us and happiness. I'm going to open that letter right now. No, wait a minute. Listen to me, please. You certainly left in a hurry last night. Anything wrong? Oh, nothing much. Just a little personal issue, that's all. <laughs> I get it. Mind your own business. That's my motto. Well, your letter isn't here, Breen. It isn't there? Well, what do you mean? It's got to be there. No. I don't know. Uh, on the level, it was here last night when I left. Say, are you kidding me, Denny? No. Well, does anybody else know the combination of that safe? Well, yes, Darnell. He's a silent partner in this place. Darnell? Oh, maybe by mistake. Check with him, will you, Denny? Yeah, Excuse sure. Me. Excuse me. Give and take. That's my motto. Haven't you any idea who could have stolen that letter? Only two men know the combination of that safe. Grady and Darnell. Darnell? Now, don't you see, you've got to tell me the truth. I must know why you've done all this. Won't you please tell me? Wait, give me time to think. Don't you realize you've been tricked that somebody's double-crossing you? Without that letter, you'll never get the money. You're, you're just sacrificing your life for nothing. With that letter missing, you haven't got a chance. Yes, I, I'm beginning to understand. And you didn't kill Ruth Parmley, did you? Tell me, did you? No, no. I knew what I knew you didn't. But why did you make that confession? Because I needed money. I needed it desperately for an operation on my brother's eyes. He's blind and it's my fault. Even now they may be operating on him. I wanted for that and to take care of him in case the operation wasn't a... I, I must ask you a few more questions. Just one or two. Try and answer them, won't you? Yes, I'll try. Your name isn't Mary Jones, is it? No, it's Dale Layden. Dale. Dale, did, did Donnell and Valencia Duncan give you those clothes you wore at the Club Sirocco? Yes. And the slippers and the bracelet and the gun? Yes. And that letter you asked me to destroy contains the true facts of this case? Yes. <laughs> That's all I need to know. Say? The gentleman says his name is Breen, Mordecai Breen. Breen? Send him up immediately. 
You may go upstairs, Mr. Breen. Apartment 12A. 12A, eh? 12A. Thanks very much. How do you do, Miss Duncan? My name is Puccini. <laughs> I uh, guess you're surprised to see me. Well, the clerk said it was Mr. Breen. Yes, I know. I told him that. I, I thought if I'd tell him my own name, <laughs> you might be out or something. <laughs> May I come in? Of course. Thank you. Well, this is a nice place you have here. Thank you. It's Mr. Darnell's apartment. Oh, I see. Do you mind if I sit down? No, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, you know, Miss Duncan, it, it's good to sit down again. I've been walking. Walking? Yes, I took a long walk up a long hill. I just paid Ruth a visit. You mean Ruth Parmalee? Yes, there's only one girl in the world for me, and that's Ruth. <laughs> You'll excuse me, Miss Duncan, if I act like a crybaby. I... <laughs> you will excuse me, won't you? Yes, of course. <laughs> Miss Duncan, sit down here. I, I want to say something to you. I can sit right over here. Just a minute, please. I'd rather you'd sit here beside me, if you don't mind. Here. These are for me? All for you. I. I picked them myself. Thanks, I... I don't quite know what else to say. Well, there isn't anything else to say but one thing, and this isn't the time to say it. You know, Miss Duncan, the grass is nice and green up there on the hill where I picked those flowers off of Ruth's grave. You know, I planted them myself, where Ruth is sleeping. Pretty, ain't they? Here, take those things back. You don't like flowers? Well, that's too bad. You better get out of here before I call the police. Call the police? If you do call the police, I'll show them this letter that Mary Jones wrote and gave to my friend Mr. Breen. I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. Now, you get this. You're going with me. Where are we going? We're going for a little ride. You and me, a little ride. property of Mordecai Breen. Yeah? There's a gentleman outside to see you. Says his name is Darnell. Oh, yes. I've been expecting him. Tell him to come in. Okay, Chief. Oh, and Happy, see that we're not disturbed while he's here, will you? Sure, boss. Not even a mouse will stare. Come in, Mr. Darnell. Ah, you sent for me, Mr. Breen? Hello, Darnell. Yes, I did. Say, so, you know, a short time ago, a young lady left a letter with me, and her name was Mary Jones. Have you ever heard of her? Well, yes. I bought the story of her life to put in one of my novels. And you agreed to pay her $18,000 for that story. Am I right? Approximately. 
I agreed to pay the 18,000 only after she'd fulfilled certain contractual obligations. You mean after she'd gone to the electric chair? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Donnell, for purely private reasons, I feel I no longer want to keep that letter in my possession. Why not? Well, my good judgment tells me not to, and, and yet I, I want to fulfill my agreement with Miss Jones. Well, if I could be of any service, Mr. Breen, I'd be only too happy. Well, you can be of service. Well, how? By paying me the $18,000. And you'll turn the letter over to me unopened immediately? I will. You know, I rather imagined from your telephone call that something like this would occur, so I came prepared. Would you mind giving me a receipt for this? No, not at all. Well, simply write, uh, well, date it first. Receipt of Mordecai Breen, one large envelope, and contents, sealed. Sealed. Left in his possession by Mary Jones. Signed. There you are. And there you are. Thank you. There's nothing in here but blank paper. What is this, a double cross? <laughs> yes. Just as you double crossed Mary Jones into the confession of a murder that she never committed. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you don't, but I do. Do what? For your information, Puccini brought your girlfriend, Valencia Duncan, to the station a while ago. Without any trouble on my part, she told the whole story. What story? The story of how she shot Ruth Parmalee because she was jealous. And brother, whether you know it or not, you're going to be leading the band at state prison. Come on. You did it, boss! You did it, did it! <laughs> For the fun? No. No, for the lady. That burn it. I was afraid of that. I sure wish Happy was back on the job. I'm getting Sally Horse all over my body from running this press. Doesn't Happy work here anymore? No. I got him a job with the city. Concrete inspector. There, <laughs> how's that, Mr. Boschini? Say, hey, Phil. Uh, you read this. I forgot my glasses. The friend in need is happy to announce the coming wedding of its editor, Mr. Mordecai Breen, to Miss Dale Layden at the little church around the corner. <laughs>